All right, so we're going to be on the play against four color loam with a slightly different version of it. However, it had Ren and Six, a few other interesting cards I'd never seen before, but actually worked pretty well with this. Game one, there was a ton of lines and plays. Uh, really excited to go over all the stuff that happened, but I kept this. It's uh, kind of sucks, but you know what? I feel the better you are with cantrips like Ponder and cards like Brainstorm allows you to really smooth out these hands. So, um, I hate mulliganing so much that I kept this hand, even though it's not the worst, it's extremely slow. I like lose the combo, uh, but either way, that was the reasoning behind that. We're waiting for opponent, they mulligan to six. So here I'm going to play an island, and uh, I had nothing going on, so I figured I would ponder. Uh, now here's an interesting one, I didn't know what I was up against, so what I decided to do is put Polluted Delta on the bottom, uh, and then ponder, and then Force of Will. Uh, that way what I can do next turn, I can shuffle, I can use my ponder, and then maybe find another blue card. So Delta, Ponda, Ponda, <laughs> what am I, from Boston? Uh, ponder and Boston, and then we pass. Did I say Boston? Yeah. That's how, that's the Boston exit, isn't it? I'm originally from Connecticut, I should know these things. So here's our ponder, and the last card was just a land. I didn't want another polluted Delta, so what I did here is fetch, island, ponder, Ponda. And once again, this isn't all that bad. Uh, what I decided to do here is play Consul's Judgment on the bottom. And then I believe it was going to be Narset on top of that and Force of Will. So pretty much next turn, if they played like some type of Haymaker, a card I didn't want them to have, what I could do is force that. Then I would have a completely open field for Narset. So Consul's uh, Narset, right? And then Force. Okay. So now I have Force Protection. So whatever they do, if I want, I can force it. And like I said, Narset will be... All alone by herself. Nice wasteland. <laughs> I always say that when I have basics out. What do you got? Um, let's see. This is probably a card I'm going to want to force. Did I force it? Wait, actually, let's think about this. Remember, I had Narset and then I had Council's Judgment. So typically, if I uh, all I would need to do is... If I play Narset, I'm going to get a lot of great value out of that because uh, they would need pretty much like Mountain and Punishing Fire to kill it and not get one more activation out of it. So I actually let this slide. So now we play our planes, we play our Narset, and we snatch that council's judgment that we knew we had there. Okay, and that's also the good thing about ponders and brainstorms before Narset. When you can at least guarantee that you're gonna get a card, uh, it's it's so much more helpful, even though, like, even if this was something kind of mediocre, uh, what what could be mediocre here? Say if it was like this, uh, it's still better to get that card advantage, because once you get your brainstorms intact, uh, you can shuffle them away, and so on and so forth. So let's steal that. At this point, I'm pretty much just looking for any type of fetch land, and then I can deal with that, even though, you know, if, say, I get a, a volcanic, or well, volcanic won't do it. Even if I get a tundra, uh, I don't mind suiciding it just to get rid of that. And now I can counter anything that's threatened Threatening. Probably a big creature because I won't be able to swords it. That's fine. I don't mind forcing this because I am getting card advantage from this. Like I play this and assuming, you know, I hit it next time. Uh, it's kind of like a two for one. All right, that's good too. So I believe I use Narset first. Okay, not bad because that's going to unlock Chalice. So let's play Tundra and let's counsel that. Perfect. So I got max value out of this. This is also going to stop Sylvan Library should they choose to play it. Okay, that's half of... Aha! Uh -huh. So, looks like we got a Ren and Six. We're going up against uh, everyone's most dreaded card. So interestingly enough, they killed this, which tells me that uh, they might have a Sylvan Library in their hand. Uh, if they did, they couldn't play it. So... That's what I was thinking. Otherwise, like this pretty much does nothing. How else are they drawing cards with this deck besides Sylvan Library? Uh, I don't think any other ways that I can think of, uh, and that's fine as well. I understood that was gonna happen. It served its purpose. Okay, so here we have nothing going on. So let's look to Snapcaster. What do we have in the bin? We have a Ponder, we have a Ponder. This is a perfect time to uh, Snapcaster Ponder. Ironically enough, I don't do this a lot because usually my hand is better than equipment, equipment, and two swords I can't use. I also know that if I use this, it's probably going to get pinged down, which isn't the worst in the world because they won't be bringing back some lands. Uh, so I went with Island Plains. Let's Ponder here. Our hand is kind of crap. Although we do have protection from creatures. Not protection, but you know what I mean. Uh, so let's see. 
I think here I actually wanted the land because this can get me uh, a planes. So I'll have island, island, planes, planes. So what I did here, I don't care for any of these. You know, anything they play that's going to be devastating is probably going to be a creature. So it was just like spell pierce, force of will, flooded strand. Yeah, and I haven't played a land. That was the specific reason why I did that. Uh, and then I can shuffle those away. Sure. I kind of expected that, but them not getting a land is cool. They're not getting card advantage, even though, uh, as expected, right? The reason why they killed Narset, that was the, uh, Narset, where are you? There you are. The only reason I could think of. Otherwise, it's just, uh, you know, fetch. Probably better to fetch in your upkeep. I just hate adding a stop there, and I don't think they're planning on doing anything. Uh, let's see, Brainstorm. Did I fire it off? I did. I had a I had a really bad hand here. I needed to I need to do something. And I was looking for a fetch land. And I didn't find one. Instead I found huh, interesting few cards. So here it's just gonna be pretty much like a batter skull and jit on top. There's actually a line I could have done was batter skull on top and then jit on top of that. I actually did the other way around where it was jit and batter skull. Because when I play this. I want to plus to it because uh, punishing fire, you know, keep it out of range. Plus this can ping it one. Uh, so pretty much what I would have, what I was going to do, which I did do, is plus two, and it was better off plus twoing me because what would have happened? I could have put batter skull on top and then jit uh, plus two myself and put the jit on the bottom. But uh, after I did that, I think like a few turns later, at first I had batter skull on top and then the other one on top. But geez, that's confusing to talk about. <laughs> this one was on top, then that one was on top. But yeah. Uh, that was the reasoning for plus twoing here. They got one on this, uh, you know, punishing fire. That would have been, let's see, one, two, three. They bring it back. They need a mountain. So I just wanted to keep it above burn range. So I plus two them and I saw Wasteland. They can keep that there. So I think I would have gotten much more value out of putting the jet on top and then putting that to the bottom. But uh, that was something I realized like right after. But uh, this game gets very complex. We got Renin 6 plus Sylvan Library against the original Jace. Still, I think the best Planeswalker ever printed. Let's see who can win the battle of card advantage, card selection, card advantage, uh, brainstorm, shuffle away. <laughs> uh, it's going to be an interesting one. <clears throat> Uh, probably a knight, which I am not worried about because I have that answered. So let's draw our batter skull. Let's uh, brainstorm. Okay. I was so desperately looking for a land because what I wanted to do is obviously plow this dude and then play a land. Uh, I didn't get a land here. So once again, I'm pretty sure it was just like Jit and batter skull back on top. You're going to be seeing those a lot. Uh, and here, let's see, I think it was just a simple plow, yes. Let's get that off the field. I don't want to wait till upkeep because then they can obviously use it. So no shenanigans with that. And here they are with their, this is quite the killer combo. Plus fetch lands, which this can get. But let's see if it's uh, too much to deal with. Okay, they're bringing that back. They're playing this, you can have it. This is something I haven't seen in forever. I think that's a reprint, right? Countryside Crusher wasn't that. Ended. Anyway, the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it in your graveyard and repeat this process. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard, so pretty much it can become a big beefy dude. Uh, I'm pretty sure I let that go. I have ways of dealing with that. And this was another one I hadn't seen. Goodness, was it Odyssey? Equal to the number of lands. I mean, that's not a bad card if you think about it. For three mana. I haven't seen it, but this seems to be a little bit more on the aggro side, which is kind of cool. In here, Snapcaster. Swords. I wanted to get rid of this first because it has trample. Okay, once again, let's let's do the deed. <laughs> and we still haven't found the land. Okay. So I want to get rid of this guy just to clear the board. Uh, this guy can guard. Oh, he's not going to guard for too long. I can pretty much kill him and then attack this. And then they have the option if they want to ping it to kill it. And then uh, I'll have a spell snare in case they want to get tricky. So once again, uh, I can't cast Batter Skull and do anything else. So 
I could always equip JIT. That would be one, two, three, four. I mean, that is a possibility that I could have looked into, but I also want to, um, I wanted to swords this. That means I wouldn't have any mana left over. So uh, what I chose to do here once again was JIT, batter skull, sword, then let's attack. I also could have pondered, um, but I wanted to play that batter skull and I was just looking for a land and uh, I played true name here because they have a very hard time dealing with true name. And now I have spell snare up and uh, pretty much I'm feeling really good because this can counter you know, a lot of things and this can counter anything. Yep, 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 yep. And they are paying some life. Uh, so I was like, hmm, I'm surprised they killed that. But the only reason they'd probably do that is if they have another one. Is if they have another one. You know what I'm talking about? Uh-oh. Do you know what I'm talking <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, this card, how many times, how many game footages do I have to do commentary for where this card just does so well? Early game, late game, mid game, after game, talking about the game, commentary on the game. We're done with the game and it's still doing well. All right, so uh, two damage to any target. I have to keep this in mind. Now this can be targeted, um, you know, with this and uh, what is it? Punishing fire. What do we got here? Um... Ironically enough, I didn't care about that. I know it has trample. I didn't want to force it. I want my card advantage. And, <laughs> and now this is really putting a wrench in my plans. Okay. I mean, I could force of will this because I know then I can't play batter skull. But I would have rather worked with Jace in my ponder to find a better way to deal with this rather than forcing it. I want the card advantage. Uh, so I wanted to keep this alive. You know, I could have killed this. Once I kill this... This isn't a big deal because it's just going to sit there. I can kill it and then play my batter skull later down the road. So we got that. And we still haven't found the <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is, it's been a really funny game. But yeah, no fetch lands uh, kind of sucks. But what are you going to do? We're still gaining card advantage. This has gotten us a ton of value. It's only going to get us more. So right here, once again, I'm pretty sure. Well, what I can do here is if I attack with this, and suit it up with JIT. I mean, I can kill this, but then this is going to attack and kill that. I don't want to do that. I want to get this off the board. So once again, it's going to be JIT and Batter Skull. And what I'm going to do here is nothing. Aha. Tricked you. I thought I was going to do something right away, right? Like, I know that Batter Skull is going to do some serious damage. Heck, even the JIT, especially with the true name on the board. But let's see what they're doing first. Okay, so... <clears throat> This is why, you know, I always wait to play Snapcaster, especially <clears throat> with instance. So response, I'm going to play Snapcaster. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm thinking about too many things. I am going to force that because uh, that's going to severely, you know, mess with my hand a lot. Now this is where I'm going to be uh, casting a Snapcaster. So since there's an exalted trigger, <clears throat> excuse me, one second. <clears throat> it's been a long day. I need some water. Either way, uh, I'm going to play Snapcaster now. Because by doing it now, when I plow it, I'm not going to give him that extra life. It could make a difference, but there's no reason to just wait till that resolves and give him that one extra life when you don't have to. Uh, and that was the reason why I countered Chalice, because I needed to be able to swords that dude. I could have not countered it, cast my Snapcaster, <clears throat> and then swords it and let it resolve. But uh, at this point with the cards in my deck, uh, I wanted to get rid of that. <clears throat> what else you got? Sure, so they're bringing back. Wasteland does nothing. Heath, sure. They can at least use the Heath for uh, shuffling their library with Sylvan Library. Okay, so shall we test one more time? Shall we brainstorm? No. Okay, so this was an interesting one here. I could have brainstormed. I was like, geez, I'm having no luck with that. I decided to return this and get some value a different way. So what I had, as you can see here, geez, how many swords have I used? One, two, plus those are... I've used four because I, I used two and then I got them back from the graveyard. Uh, either way, I wanted to return this because they did have a council's judgment. Usually they play like a one of in this. So I know that if I got rid of this, I can just play batter skull next turn and they're going to be in trouble. So I decided to return this to my hand. This is a, a pretty awesome line. I don't know if, uh, if you've ever played with, you know, Jason, you had a uh, snapcaster out. This is something to consider. Okay. So I had just amount, enough amount of mana. So I played that targeted councils. 
And I got rid of this doofus right here because he's blocking this. That's been my plan for the longest time, but not finding a land for a long time and being able to keep up counter magic, uh, that didn't work. And then this guy came out, that didn't work. Uh, so now I'm pretty safe to tack with true name. Yeah. Like they can kill him, but I don't think they have any haste creatures I need to worry about. Plus that put me at four, which means I'm pretty much okay with it dying at this point because my game plan from now on, since I removed this guy, like I said, I'm... I don't think they play more than one. Uh, I was willing to take that risk, so if this dies, I can just play Badger Skull next turn, so uh, I was fine with that. <laughs> okay. And they are deciding to not pay any life. Wasteland, sure you can have it. Okay, we know what's coming here, as expected. <clears throat> This game, I mean, I probably could have just, like, fate-sealed my way to win, perhaps, but I have a feeling this and, you know, this and Ren would have stopped that. I would have lost out in card advantage, so uh, I am cool with Jace dying. I got so much value out of that. Uh, they can have that. They have no cards in their hand. That's fine. I have a Ponder and a Batter Skull and a Jit. <laughs> All right. Like, obviously, I could play Batter Skull. I could play Jit and connect it or I can ponder. Now, seeing that they have a library, uh, they're gonna be getting some good card advantage. And I mean, a back to basics wouldn't be too bad here. It wouldn't be the worst. I mean, it would cut them off these three mana. Uh, I believe I actually went with ponder here. Yes. And it's very important that I ponder first because if I don't find anything I like, I can then play JIT and uh, connect it. Uh-huh. So we did find something we like. This is good because it's going to stop this. Not for long, for about a turn or so, but that's probably all I need. Uh, so I think what I decided to do here was, uh, let's see, it was probably, uh, let, me, let me think. Narset's probably going on top and then Brainstorm and then Flooded Strand because I don't need mana at this point. So, okay, so if Flooded Strand was in the middle, that's fine. Pretty much I'm going to play Narset here and then I'm just going to get the Brainstorm. Yeah, okay. So it didn't really matter what order I played it, assuming I was playing Narset. It's fine. They have Punishing Fire in the uh, bin, plus they can't get it back, so I can activate this, which is guaranteed a card, because I know that I have Brainstorm. Pierce is doing nothing here, so very easy pick there. Now this is going to be blocking this here. Unless, like, say Upkeep... I guess upkeep, what they could do, let's see, if they returned that to their hand, oh wait, no, then they could only play it once and it would still be at one. Okay, so uh, that's that. It's funny, if you ever look at the game notes, it's like, stop from drawing more than one card. Thank you, Narset. So here I'm surprised they actually didn't just ping it. Um, because now, like, they're leaving me. Obviously, they have to do it twice, but... I think it would be better if they pinged it there and then I can't activate it and the next turn they bring it back and ping it again. So now I, I took a few minutes, not a few minutes, but I took some time to think. I'm like, well, if I activate this, I know they're going to kill it, but they can kill it anyway and I don't mind that it turns on Sylvan because I have a brainstorm. I have a pretty powerful hand. I can play JIT. Uh, so I didn't mind getting value out of it. I drew a Delta, so that's going to make my brainstorm even better. So I believe right away and then, yes, as expected, they were going to do that. It unlocks this, but I'm not worried about that. I have some really good cards in my hand, and assuming they don't have any more of these, and even if they don't, they're going to have trouble with this. That was the reasoning behind that. Good tapping on their part, too, in case I play it back to basics. In, ca <laughs> in case I play it back to basics, uh, yeah, sure. You leave me with no choice. Uh, and here, I believe it was either... Jit or Skull? I think it was Jit. Yeah. Because Skull would have been, I would attack for three. Let's see, 10, 9, 8. And then it would have been seven. They would have been at one. Uh, I think it's the same either way. Yeah. Because I attack for three here, then it has four and three more. It's a seven. Yeah, they'd be at one. So either way, it's three turns. Unless my math is incorrect, which sometimes it is. Sure. Plus, this at least allows me to kill something that comes into play. Uh, certainly wouldn't be a knight, I'll tell you that much, or that other Terravore card. Wouldn't be that. 
I mean, they'd probably just sacrifice it to kill that. Uh, so I guess, unless they're playing something else, but either way, allows me to gain life too if I need to. And that was it, they conceded. So that was a very fun game. I mean, you saw the power of uh, Renin 6 and the combination of Sylvan Library, and we still fought through that. I got so much value out of my cards, even though I <clears throat> bricked, I guess you could say bricked. <laughs> How many times did I shuffle? Like it was Batter Skull and Umazawa's Jeep. Jite in my beginning hand and I pretty much had them throughout the entire game uh, just shuffling them I couldn't find a uh, polluted delta or you know arid mesa fetch land But I got so much value out of that in combination with the uh, snapcaster Saw a lot of cool snapcaster tricks plus the the ability to bring it back Using a jace kill that other guy which allowed me to open up my artifacts either way. That was a really fun game Let's go to the sideboarding discussion and I'll talk a little bit about that all right, so as always, I'm just making a copy of my deck. Uh, actually, what I did <laughs> is I moved around my normal deck, and I forgot to move it back, thinking that it wouldn't change. And game one was like all of my sideboarding cards, and I had like Hydro Blast in there. It was it was horrible. Anyway, so let's look at the cards we want to bring in. I'm going to move these over here, starting with uh, cards we want to bring in. So Containment Priest, no. Uh, Disenchant, yes. These decks play Choke. They play Chalice. There are a ton of targets to hit Sylvan Library. So both of my Disenchants, you can call them that. Rest in Peace is going to be great. Uh, Vendillion Click is all right. If you're playing Punishing Fire, I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. Uh, force of Negation, you could bring in. If you want a fifth force and you're scared of like choke or some other stuff, I didn't specifically bring it in for this, but if you wanted to, I uh, definitely could. Surgical is awesome. There's a lot of crap that you can just snipe out. I love the, the flexibility of it. Spell Snare is awesome in this. Uh, Fluster Storm, no, and Path to Exile. They had a lot of creatures, as you saw, so these are going to be the seven we are bringing in. Let's um, sort. Slide this over. First and foremost, we're playing against a Wasteland deck, and I'm not using Blast that is coming out. Uh, Pierce, I don't like. Maybe if I was on the play, just to have some more utility against a lot of the uh, cards I don't like, like Chalice, Choke, Sylvan Library, uh, Renin 6. However, they do get really bad late game, uh, so that was an easy take out. Let's see everything here. Looks great. Disenchant, Rest in Peace, Stone Forge, Counterspell, Nature's Chant, yes. Uh, here, despite the fact that Jace did very well, uh, once again, I don't, I'm not too crazy about it. This can stop Sylvan Library, uh, so I actually took out both of those. This is going to kind of be up in the air, whether you want to keep one of these or none of these. Uh, I believe I actually took out all of them. I wasn't too worried about utilizing Planeswalkers. Uh, aside from that, they can die easily. Uh, but you got to protect them like you saw in the first game. But either way, this deck, this 60 here is very, looks very good against this deck. When you consider we got Force of Will for, you know, help against Chalice and specifically Choke. If we want to go after Ren 6, that's fine. Back to Basics. They do have Basics, but after they get out their first, what, two, maybe three, uh, it's certainly going to make it a more difficult game for them. Council's Judgment is extra removal, once again, for a lot of the uh, Chalices, Ren 6, you know, any of the creatures, Choke. Uh, two disenchants with that and that rest in peace is going to be uh, quite the interesting card as you'll see And this deck seemed to have a lot of creatures. So we have five removals and that's pretty much it surgical if we want to snipe anything <clears throat> uh, And that's what our deck looks like going into game number two. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage All right, Matt 5 -0. Let's see what you got We are going to be in the draw since we won game numero uno and I like this hand despite the fact that I do not have a Planes. This can fetch Tundra, which I don't like doing, but this hand has protection. It has disenchant against crap that they have that we don't like. It has the Stoneforge package because we can always just get Batter Skull and race that way. And we have a way to nuke pretty much, I mean, how many cards in their deck? My goodness. <laughs> anyway, I kept this. Okay, so. And let's see what they did. They kept 7 2. And that is exactly what I like to see. Nothing on first turn. Okay, brainstorm. Now, I might have actually pondered here because I do have force protection. So, probably played an island. If I did, uh, I didn't. If I did, I did. If I didn't, I didn't. Let's let's check it out. I might not have. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. That's more of like my play style. Let's see what they have going on. I can always respond with a brainstorm and then uh, you know go from there. Oh, 
when in doubt, I usually wait. Okay, so this is perfect. I'm glad this came up. Uh, obviously here, well, maybe not so obviously, I could just force a will right away. However, uh, I do want to get some action out of this brainstorm, despite the fact it's not the greatest spot in the world to use it. If I had one more turn, I could have played a polluted delta. However, my hand is actually really good. So if I get some crap cards, uh, it's not going to be a huge deal. I also am looking for a planes. If I find the planes, that is amazing. I have disenchant. That means I don't need to use force of will. So by utilizing brainstorm here, it's going to give me a lot of information about whether I should force of will this or wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I got two planes pretty much. Uh, and here is exactly what I'm looking for. This hand is pretty much stacked. And the good thing about this is I'm only going to have to throw away one card because I cast this on his turn. So I'll put back the one I don't want. So when you figure this can probably get island, this can get planes. So I'm probably putting flooded strand back in the deck because that's going to be the more powerful um, fetch land, meaning if I get a flooded strand later, I can pick between whether I want blue or white. So that's something to keep in mind as well. When you know you're going to be using, say this for blue, this for white, throw away the good one. Let's hope I did that now. Okay. So flooded strand should be on top. There we go. And it doesn't matter what's going to be on top of that because I'm going to be drawing it. So I do not want to force of will this. I have it covered. I have disenchant. So now I can disenchant this. I can play rest in peace. I don't want to play this because uh, it has a much higher impact when they get like a Ren and Six down, when they get a Knight down, when they get that other card that has whatever. So actually in this spot, I said, who cares about your Chalice of the Void? Let's just play around it. And that's exactly what I decided to do. So let's fetch our planes here and play Stoneforge. Let's make them have to deal with a Batter Skull. That's the good thing about this deck too. Uh, a lot of times you can just pretty much, you know, just say who cares about your chalice. Uh, not always, but that does come up a lot. There are a lot of two and three drops in this deck. It doesn't fold to chalice like as bad as say miracles does, which is something I like. So do I care about this? Do I really want to pitch a force to something else, knowing that I can disenchant this and unlock my cards? Uh, I decided no. I love the card advantage I have right now. I mean, I have, what, seven cards in my hand, and they have four. And I have a lot of haymakers, plus this is going to deal with it. So uh, I said, sure, you can have that. <laughs> uh, now they have three cards, and, oh, man, that's just... Mm -hmm. That's just unfortunate for them. I guess they saw all the value I got out of my Snapcasters. That's actually not a bad card to bring in, um, you know, especially from its mine, from my graveyard. So uh, I said they can have that. That's fine. Now I really have a ton of card advantage. And that's a great draw too, except the fact I can't cast it. No big deal. Let's play our Polluted Delta. Now here what I can do, I can play Rest in Peace, but... I don't want to do that necessarily. Like, obviously, it's going to take care of this. I would rather get in Batter Skull, and then I can deal with whatever they have. Because uh, once again, I like playing my cards last. If I can wait to use my Stoneforge activation, that means I can use it at the end of their turn. I can use a Disenchant at the end of their turn. I can also force anything that's going to be a problem. So once again, the type of magic I usually play, land, go. Here I am to piling up a ton of awesome cards, despite the fact that this is shutting off three of them. One of these can be pitched the force, which is good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> go ahead and read that card for a second. And then go ahead and look at this too. <laughs> See, like I said, it's, it's good to kind of sometimes, unless you're playing against a deck that has like discard, you know, or if you're playing against, you know, reanimator, you probably want to throw it out there, but they can't touch this. They're not playing. Are they playing black? I don't think I've seen black. Either way, if they went to do discard, I could just obviously uh, force it. Awesome. Now we can bring in batter skull. Do we still care about this? No, we do not. Like it's not affecting us because both of these cards are about to receive a very bad day. Have a very bad day. I guess they were just looking to beef up their night. Sure. Another blue card. This will get pitched the force. So right away, <laughs> when we play this, gets a 2-2, two, two, and this just dies. That sounds like a good idea. So if we play this before combat, this is going to do some serious work. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, 
Having trouble dealing with Renin 6? Spell Snare. Having trouble dealing with Renin 6 and friends? Rest in peace. And now this is just a completely dead card, which is awesome. That just nullified them playing that. Like, what are they going to do with this? Just nothing, pretty much. Now they have to either chump or do nothing. Apparently, they didn't have a Maze of Ith in this game. Otherwise, either that or they didn't see the line. Uh, they could have obviously just kept mazing that. But uh, either way, that I think that would have been an appropriate line to just keep mazing me. Anyway, I do have Choke covered. I mean, I could force it, or next turn, even if they cast Choke, this would be tapped. I could fetch uh, an Island here and then cast it with that and that. So, as always, I am in a very good spot. Okay, so this is something I am going to want to force because I can't spell snare it. And once that comes in, this is getting blown up, and this is doing the majority of the work. So, let's force a wheel here, and let's pitch Ponder because we have two of those. What else you got? Okay, that's fine. So I guess that kind of changes things up when it comes to uh, getting rid of that. Now I just don't need to. And as always, I still like the spot I'm in. In case I haven't said that enough. Uh, and this is actually not a bad draw. People talk about this a lot. Like, well, Snapcaster Mage, it's going to just, like, kill your Snapcaster. I mean, rest in peace is just going to kill your Snapcasters. Not really. Uh, you'll see... Especially the type of game that I like to play, you know, just kind of playing last, seeing what my opponent does, and then going from there. This can now become a crucial 2-1 uh, that I can use to help finish the game, because either they're going to block this or they're going to trade with this, and then that's going to free up for both of these to attack. Because look at it this way. What do you think Rest in Peace is hurting most? I mean, I killed that other creature, right, just because it died instantly. Uh, this, you know, is pretty much doing nothing. It's just a 2-2 that can, you know, get lands if they want. And so what? This is going to be a 2-1 with it? That's not a bad trade at all. Okay. Once again, rest in peace. Just doing a ton of awesome work. And what else they got? A red and six. What do you know? A rest in peace doing a ton of work. I mean, they could just, you know, take it up all they want. That's fine. Sure. At least now that can kill this. That's one thing, but, you know, so be it. I didn't choose to play it there yet. Okay, this isn't bad because now what I have the option of doing, end of turn, I can actually disenchant a chalice, and then next turn I can fetch a tundra with this, and then counsel's judgment the other chalice. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. If they double blocked here, I was going to be very happy. And just so you know, I was attacking them every time. Uh, this is completely irrelevant to me. Okay, so this is getting lands. Okay, not a bad play. Chump block. I like it. May you rest in peace. <laughs> okay, and here's, the, here's what I'm talking about with playing out lands. I mean, I guess they could play that and waste this, or maybe wait till I get a Tundra and waste it, but uh, I guess it's not a big deal when it comes to this deck. They don't have, like, a ton of instants, so uh, I guess that's not a big deal. Against some other decks, it probably would be. Uh, yep, they're just beefing that up. Still did nothing. Okay, now I have two Snapcasters. Uh, I didn't want to play Disenchant there, because when I get a Tundra, now they can't actually Wasteland that, so there was merit to them playing that. As I contradict myself, once again, let's attack them, not Ren. Okay, so they did that. So I just fashion got an island. They were getting a little antsy. This rest in peace was uh, <laughs> putting a damper on their plans, to say the least. Sure. Sure. Okay, now we're going to start playing Snapcasters. That's a good draw. Uh, I don't want to uh, show them that I picked up a land. Just conceal some information. Sure, I will take that. That is fine. They are at two. Now I'll play my land. So now, <clears throat> like I said, I could always, uh, you know, they're at two life. If worse comes to worse, next turn, what I can do? Well, at the end of this turn, I can play Snapcaster, and then they have to block this, and they're going to take three. Uh, I can always counsel's judgment something next turn. I'll keep this not cracked, so I can always get a Tundra if I need it. Uh, moving on to their turn. 
Look at this. This this was this was a classic movement. Okay, they fetched. Wait for it, and then they <laughs> they ping themselves. Oh my god, that was a that was a great ending. The the writing was on the wall for them. But this game had a lot of interesting decisions. Where like I talked about, I'm like, do I want to worry about this? Like I had my council's judgment, and then I ended up never using it. And then I chose to go with Stoneforge and then pretty much protect it with Force of Will. I had a lot of backup. And despite the fact Rest in Peace hurt me, quote unquote, hurt me slightly, uh, this is still able to flash in, do some damage, and so on and so forth. But uh, that was the power of Stoneblade versus Renin 6, Sylvan Library, Knight of the Reliquary, Chalice of the Void. A lot of cards that Stoneblade doesn't like, but you know what? There's always a way to beat them. Hope you enjoyed this killer commentary. Uh, and that's about it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.